In this week's Weekly Funny Jokes, we bring you our best joke compilation of the week. These jokes are sure to make you laugh, from the first one to the last one. These are our story jokes which we love to generate. This week we bring you five jokes, starting with a joke about little Johnny, until we end with a joke about ugly misunderstanding. So, sit back, get the popcorn, and get ready to laugh until your stomach ache. In our first joke of the week, we bring you little Johnny and a teacher trying to teach them manners. In today's cartoon story joke, we deal with the realm of manners, where Renaissance elegance meets modern wit. There's a classroom scene that's pure comedy gold. Picture this, Michael's blunt restroom request, Sherman's suave exit, and Johnny's charming flourish. It's a hilarious journey through the corridors of etiquette where even a simple bathroom break becomes a lesson in finesse. Ah, the Renaissance. When Michelangelo sculpted, Galileo pondered the stars, and Shakespeare spun tales. But amidst the cultural explosion, manners had their moment in the spotlight. Enter Giovanni della Casa, the Renaissance's Miss Manners, preaching the gospel of etiquette in his 1558 masterpiece, Galateo. His advice? No public hair combing or hand washing, unless it's before dinner, where cleanliness is next to godliness, especially when your hands double as utensils. But forks? Oh, they were scandalous. Initially seen as too fancy or too girly for the gents, they were a slow burn to popularity. Meanwhile, communal spoons ruled the soup scene, where Erasmus sagely advised to wipe before you re-dip. And let's not forget the elephant in the room, or rather the dinner table, farting. Erasmus had a solution. If you can't escape, let a cough mask the sound. Smooth, right? But today's misconduct says to spare your dinner companions the symphony of smells. But fear not, not all Renaissance etiquette is ancient history. Giovanni della Casa warned against nosy wine sniffing and sharing half-eaten fare, a lesson lost on poor George Costanza. Remember the double dipping drama? Renaissance folks were way ahead of the curve, keeping their manners as clean as their soup spoons. Ah, progress. Gather around, folks. It's time to kick off a rollicking joke. And today's hero once again is the evergreen little Johnny. During one of her daily classes, a teacher attempted to install some etiquette into her students. She posed the question, Michael, imagine you're out for dinner with a charming young lady. How would you politely excuse yourself to use the facilities? Michael, without missing a beat, replied, Hang on, I've got to hit the restroom really quick. The teacher raised an eyebrow, unimpressed. A bit too direct, Michael. Let's try for a touch more finesse. Sherman, your turn. How would you handle it? Sherman, aiming for sophistication, offered, My apologies, but I need to step away for a moment. I'll return promptly. Closer, the teacher nodded approvingly, but still room for improvement. Now, little Johnny, can you summon your manners and show us how it's done? How would you navigate this delicate situation? Johnny, always quick on the uptake, responded, Darling, may I beg your pardon for just a moment? I need to extend my regards to a dear friend of mine, whom I'm eager to introduce to you. After our splendid dinner. <laughs> In our second joke of the week, we delve into marriage and a story about prison. Today's cartoon story joke is about to take you on a hilarious journey through the ups and downs of long-term love. So, buckle up and prepare to laugh your socks off as we explore the quirky quirks and delightful surprises that come with saying, I do, for the long haul. Before we unveil the comedic climax, let's sprinkle a dash of historical hilarity on to the proceedings. Ah, the fascinating world of long-term marriage, where love, laughter, and a sprinkle of friendship networks reign supreme. Picture this. A study by Robert and Jeanette Lauer found that couples married for over 50 years were practically soaring on the love roller coaster, scoring off the charts on the Locke Wallace marital satisfaction test. But hold on to your hats because it gets even better. 
Another study revealed the shocking truth. People in long marriages are basically married to the idea of, well, staying married. They don't see divorce as an option, folks. According to sociologist Pepper Schwartz, having a spouse who can bounce back from life's surprises like a champ is the real MVP in any long-term relationship. Now, let's talk records. Guinness World Records has been keeping tabs on the longest marriages since its first edition back in 1955. From Sir Temujin Bikaji Nariman and Lady Nariman's epic 86-year love saga to Herbert and Zelmara Fisher's record-breaking reign as the longest married couple, these lovebirds are giving us all relationship goals to aspire to. And let's not forget about the longest married couple project where lovebirds from across the nation are celebrated for their impressive relationship milestones. Because let's face it, folks, when it comes to love, there's no such thing as too many celebrations. Cheers to the lovebirds who prove that true love really does stand the test of time. All right, folks, let's wrap up our journey through the annals of time and skip straight to the good stuff. The joke. A woman awakes during the night to find that her husband is not in their bed. She puts on her robe and goes downstairs to look for him. She finds him sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee in front of him. He appears deep in thought, staring at the wall like it's got all the answers. She watches as he wipes a tear from his eye and takes a sip of coffee. What's the matter, dear? She whispers as she steps into the room. The wife is obviously very concerned about her husband's unexpected behavior. Why are you down here at this time of night? The husband looks up. Do you remember 20 years ago when we were dating and you were only 17? He asks. The wife is touched, thinking her husband is so caring and sensitive. Yes, I do, she replies, giving her husband a little hug. The husband pauses. The words are not coming easily. He spills the beans, taking her back two decades to their reckless teenage days. Do you remember when your father caught us in the back seat of my car? Yes, I remember, says the wife, lowering herself into a chair beside him. The husband continues. Do you remember when he threatened to lock me up for 20 years unless we tied the knot? She recalls, the weight of history sinking in. I remember that too. She replies softly. He wipes another tear from her cheek and says, Guess what, sweetheart? If I hadn't said I do, then today's the day I'd be walking out of jail. <laughs> In our third joke of the week, we bring you a newly wedded husband and his love for the game of golf. Today's cartoon story joke is a swinging tale of love and attention starring golf and a wife caught in the crossfire. From Roman stick and ball antics to Ming Dynasty swing sessions, the history of golf is a comedy of strokes. So grab your clubs and join us as we dive into the world where fairways meet foul play and a round of golf becomes a marriage hazard. Get ready for laughs and links in this uproarious love affair with the ancient game. Ah, the wild and wacky history of golf where swinging sticks and chasing balls have been a pastime for centuries. From Roman pagans to Ming Dynasty courtiers, everyone seemed to be teeing off in their own way. But let's not forget about Scotland, where golf truly found its groove. Legend has it that King James II was so miffed by golf, distracting his archers, that he banned the game in 1457. Thankfully, King James IV saw the light and became a golfer himself lifting the ban in 1502. Talk about a royal change of heart. And then there's St. Andrews, the holy grail of golf courses. It's like the Mecca for golfers, drawing pilgrims from far and wide to test their skills on its historic links. But wait, there's more. Musselburgh Links holds the title for the world's oldest golf course, certified by Guinness World Records. And let's not forget about the Open Championship, the OG of golf tournaments, kicking off in 1860 in Ayrshire, Scotland. But the Scots didn't keep all the fun to themselves. Nope, they took golf across the pond to America, setting up the first golf club in Yonkers, New York, in 1888. It was like the shot heard round the world, 
launching a love affair with golf that continues to this day. So, whether you're slicing through history on the old course or sinking putts in your local mini golf joint, remember, golf isn't just a game. It's a journey through time, filled with laughs, legends, and the occasional sand trap. Keep swinging, folks. Hold on to your putters, folks, because we're about to tee off into a comedy gold mine. Get ready to swing like a golf club through the air with laughter, so grab your caddies and prepare for a hole-in-one of humor. Tim had always treasured his golf clubs like prized possessions, treating them with the kind of reverence most people reserved for fine art or expensive jewelry. So, when he returned from his honeymoon, eager to immerse himself in his beloved sport once more, he found himself faced with an unexpected ultimatum from his new wife. As he meticulously arranged his clubs in the garage, his wife approached, her expression a mix of concern and determination. Tim, she began tentatively, I've been thinking, now that we're married, maybe it's time you quit golfing. You spend more time on the course than you do with me. Plus, think of all the money we could save. Tim's heart skipped a beat, and for a moment, he felt like he'd been transported back to the back nine of a particularly challenging round. Did she just suggest he give up golf? The thought alone was enough to make him break out in a cold sweat. But Tim was nothing, if not quick-witted, and he knew exactly how to diffuse the tension in the air. With a grin that bordered on mischievous, he turned to his wife and said, Darling, you're starting to sound like my ex-wife. His wife's eyes widened in shock, and for a moment, Tim almost regretted his quip. Almost. But then, he couldn't help but revel in the absurdity of it all. Ex-wife, she exclaimed, her voice tinged with disbelief. I didn't know you were married before. Tim couldn't resist the opportunity to inject a little humor into the situation. I wasn't, he confessed, a twinkle in his eye. But if you keep trying to separate me from my clubs, who knows? You might just become my first ex-wife. <laughs> in our fourth joke of the week, we bring you an hilarious farming joke about a very special cow, which is not impressed with the resident bull. In today's cartoon story joke, we're about to take a wild ride through the whimsical world of farming. Picture this, farmers donning chef hats, playing matchmaker for pigs, and even outfitting cows with the latest in wearable tech. It's a hilarious hodgepodge of gourmet meals for cows, spa days for pigs, and a dash of Silicon Valley right in the barnyard. So, buckle up and prepare to be entertained as we delve into the comedic chaos of meat production strategies. Farmers get creative with animal diets, tweaking the grub to keep their critters happy and healthy. It's like a gourmet meal plan for cows. Keeping animals in tip-top shape is crucial for meat magic. Farmers play doctor with regular checkups, vaccinations, and even spa days for the livestock. Healthy cows make tasty burgers. After all, it's all about matchmaking on the farm. Farmers play Cupid, pairing up animals with the best genes for maximum meatness. Who knew pigs had a dating scene? Farming meets the future with high-tech gadgets. From Fitbits for cows to automated feeding machines, it's like Silicon Valley moved to the barnyard. Who needs a smartphone when your cow has an iPad? When the meat market gets tough, farmers get creative. They dabble in everything from growing veggies to hosting farm tours. It's like a farmer's market meets Disneyland. Farmers aren't lone wolves. They're more like a big supportive family. They join forces with other farmers, industry groups, and even government agencies to tackle meaty challenges together. It's like a barnyard Avengers team ready to save the day. By mixing and matching these strategies, farmers can roll with the punches and keep the meat train chugging along, ensuring a steady supply of delicious goodies for us all. All right, folks, time to switch gears from serious to seriously hilarious. Put away your textbooks and get ready to dive headfirst into the deep end of laughter. It's joke time, where the punchlines are as golden as a chicken nugget on a Sunday morning. A farmer, eager to improve his herd, 
splurged on a top-of-the-range limousine cow at a prestigious auction. This cow was the cream of the crop, boasting genes that promised premium milk production and robust calves. The farmer envisioned a bright future of prosperity and success with his prized cow leading the charge. However, much to his dismay, the cow's behavior left much to be desired when it came to matters of romance. Despite the farmer's best efforts to introduce her to the resident bull, she seemed utterly disinterested. No amount of coaxing or cajoling could persuade her to engage in any bovine bonding activities. Intrigued by the cow's peculiar behavior, the farmer sought the advice of the local vet, hoping for a solution to his romantic dilemma. The vet, renowned for his expertise in matters of animal behavior, arrived at the farm ready to crack the case. After observing the cow's standoffish antics and the bull's futile attempts at courtship, the vet couldn't help but chuckle knowingly. Ah, this cow, he mused, shaking his head in amusement. You see, my friend, this isn't just any ordinary bovine you've got here. This is a limousine cow, bred for excellence and superiority. The farmer's eyes widened with realization as the vet continued to unravel the mystery. Limousine cows are renowned for their discerning tastes and high standards, he explained. They simply won't settle for anything less than the best when it comes to choosing a mate. With a heavy heart, the farmer accepted the harsh reality that his prized cow was playing hard to get. But just when he thought things couldn't get any worse, the vet dropped a bombshell revelation that left him reeling. Does this cow happen to come from Douglas? The vet inquired, a knowing glint in his eye. The farmer, taken aback by the question, confirmed that indeed she did. Well, there's your answer, the vet chuckled. There is absolutely nothing you can do about this. I know this for a fact because my wife also hails from Douglas. <laughs>In our last story joke of the week, we bring you a couple battling to have children and the wonders of surrogacy. In today's cartoon story joke, an unfortunate misunderstanding unfolded in the Smith household, leaving everyone in stitches. The Smith family, desperate for a bundle of joy, decided to enlist the help of a surrogate father to assist with their baby-making endeavors. Surrogacy. From ancient awkwardness, to modern marvels. Picture this, ancient civilizations grappling with infertility, resorting to some seriously bizarre solutions. It's like a historical soap opera, but with more fertility gods and fewer commercial breaks. In the wild world of traditional surrogacy, couples look to their neighbors for a little baby-making magic. I mean, who needs Tinder when you've got your neighbor's spouse on speed dial, right? Talk about awkward block parties. But wait, there's more. Fast forward to the 1970s, where enterprising lawyers were drafting surrogacy contracts faster than you can say, test tube. It's like they were playing a real life game of legal twister, twisting and turning through murky ethical waters. And let's not forget the Baby M saga, a legal battle so juicy it could rival any daytime drama custody disputes, birth certificates gone rogue, and enough courtroom drama to fill a season of law and order. Who needs Netflix when you've got real life legal thrillers? But fear not, fellow humans longing for bundles of joy. Enter gestational surrogacy, where science and technology join forces to create modern miracles. It's like IVF meets the Jetsons, minus the flying cars, but with way more baby bumps. So buckle up folks, from ancient baby-making antics to 21st century surrogacy showdowns, the journey to parenthood has never been more entertaining. Grab your popcorn and settle in for a wild ride through the wacky world of surrogacy. On the day that the surrogate father went to visit the Smith family, kissed Mr. Smith his wife goodbye early, and said, I have to go to work first, sweetheart. Good luck, and the surrogate should be here any moment. About an hour later, the doorbell chimed, and Mrs. Smith were greeted not by their expected guest, but by a baby photographer. Believing the photographer was their hired help, Mrs. Smith welcomed him warmly. Little did she know, 
the photographer's expertise lay in capturing babies on film, not in conceiving them. Good morning, miss, the photographer greeted. I came to... Oh no, there is no need to explain. Miss Smith said, I expected you here today. Really? Well, that is good. Did you know that babies is my specialty? The photographer said. Well, that is what me and my husband hoped. Please come inside and sit. Where do we begin? The woman asked. As the photographer launched into a spiel about his photography techniques, baths, couches, and beds, oh my. Mrs. Smith's confusion mounted. She couldn't fathom how she'd been attempting all the wrong positions for so long. In the bath and sitting room? No wonder nothing worked for us, Miss Smith said. Well, Miss Smith, unfortunately, I can't guarantee that every shoot is a good one, and therefore I try to use different positions in every six to seven corners. Then I am sure you will get different results that you would be satisfied with. My goodness, but that is a lot, Miss Smith said out of breath. Miss, in my work, a man must take his time. I don't believe to be in and out in five minutes. I doubt that you will be disappointed. The photographer took off his backpack and took out a portfolio of his baby photos. This is made on the top floor of a bus, the photographer said. My goodness, Miss Smith said and gripped to her throat. And these twins were made and came out perfectly, especially when you know the mother. She was a very difficult person. Difficult? Mrs. Smith's head was spinning faster than a tilt-a-whirl at a baby expo. Yes, she was so scared that I had to take her to the park to get the job done. People came to have a look at the wonders. What? Miss Smith said. And it went on for more than three hours. The mother kept on screaming I could barely concentrate, and when it began to get dark, I then had to start rushing my shots. The worst was when the squirrels started mumbling on my equipment. So, I stopped and packed up. Miss Smith leant forward, muttered dry mouth. What do you mean they nibbled on your equipment? It is true, Miss Smith. And just when Miss Smith believed she'd reached her threshold, the photographer mentioned something about setting up his three foot for the shoot. Mrs. Smith's brain short-circuited, and she hit the floor quicker than you could say, say cheese. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.